meeting to order. Um, this meeting is a meeting of the West Java Local School District Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the West Java Local School District's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is a time for public participation during the meeting as indicated in the agenda. Mrs. Sherwin? Yes. Dr. Beers? Here. Mrs. Claypool? Here. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lovemore? Yes. Please stand for the pledge, please.
You don't get to decide that you can just ignore us parents when the questions get uncomfortable or they threaten your friends. That's not how this works. You don't get to choose when you are responsive, transparent, and not at all secretive. You either are or you are not, and you are not. So I ask again, will you investigate the allegation of misconduct? Is a formal complaint required to investigate the misconduct? Does policy 9130 apply to the assistant superintendent? What is the policy that states a formal complaint must be filed against a superintendent or a su assistant superintendent in order to initiate an investigation into alleged misconduct and or potential illegal activity? If a public allegation was made of sexual abuse by a staff member, would a formal complaint be required before you investigate? Even though I already know the answers to these questions, and I suspect you do too, they are not rhetorical. Per your new mandate on being responsive, transparent, and not at all secretive, I expect answers. A wise man once told me, appearance is reality. And right now, it appears as though you're covering for your friends. Okay. We are moving on to routine items. Yes. Resolution 76 to approve routine items of the West Yakima Local Board of Education. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All roll, Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Clayton? Yes. Mrs. Goldman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lemore? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Resolution 77 to approve warrants for the February 2024 school year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, yeah I have a couple questions for my own edification. Um, the SRO High School, that amount, is that a quarterly payment? Half year. Half year. Okay. And it depends on um, where fresh is it to. Is it to Russell or to Chester? Chester. Half year. And then the other one, the other one was the uh, spelling bee participation fee. $25. What is that amount there? <laughs> this is $122,000. It's paid on. It, the way it works, it's $25 for the fee, but it's on a larger payment to the ESC for $122. So it's really the ESC payment? In total. And then I was going to say, boy, that seems like a lot to purchase. It's very expensive spell. $25 is our fee to the ESC. I thought we were off a few zeros there. Thanks. That's all. That was, that was my only question. Oh, please. Mrs. Skypo? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lovorn? Yes. Mr. Sherwin? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Resolution 78 to approve donations for the Lindsay so Field Trip. I'm sorry. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All of please. Mrs. Coleman Mall? Yes. Ms. Lovorn? Yes. Mrs. Sherwin? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Kuyper? Yes. Resolution 79 to approve the increase in classified casual labor rate to $16 per hour. This will match our custodial rate. So, so moved. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Lovemore? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Claypool? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Wall? Yes. Dr. Walker? Resolution 80 is to approve an unpaid leave of absence from the individual listed. So moved. Second. Need discussion. All the roll, please. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Pipel? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Wall? Yes. Ms. Lovemore? Yes. Resolution 81 is to approve additional per diem rates of pay for certified staff in the 2023-2024 school year, and those individuals are listed. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Clayton? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Wall? Yes. Ms. Lovell? Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Resolution 82 is to rescind certified stipends for work outside of the 2023-2024 school year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? That's because just because they didn't wish to do it, but <coughs> someone else to do it. We have one person doing it, and the other three are ran out of time to do it due to workload responsibilities. Okay. These are the experiences for the girls. Mm -hmm. the late so leadership, leadership. Mm -hmm. girls activity. 
you call roll, please. Mrs. Craig Yes. Mrs. Coleman Wall? Yes. Ms. Lavor? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Resolution 83 is to approve the 2024 summer programming segment. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Coleman Wall? Yes. Ms. Lavor? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Craig Yes. Resolution 84 is to approve classified staff appointments for the 2023-2024 school year. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Lamour? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Greypool? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Resolution 85 is to accept a classified staff resignation. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Craigle? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lavor? Yes. Resolution 86 is to approve a change in classified staff contracts for the 2023-2024 school year, again moving from probationary to limited contracts. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Craigle? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lovemark? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Resolution 87 is to approve a supplemental contract for the 2023-2024 school year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Craigle? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lovemark? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Resolution 88 is to rescind the service contract for the 2023-2024 school year. So moved. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lovemore? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Pickle? Yes. Resolution 89 is to approve service contracts for the 2023-2024 school year. So moved. Second. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Lavenworth? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Heitman? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Resolution 90 is to authorize the award of the service contract for the 2023-2024 school year to the individuals listed. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Heitman? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lovelock? Yes. Resolution 91 is to approve chaperones for the overnight Disney band trip in March 2024. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Feichel? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lovelock? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Resolution 92 is to approve a teaching observation assignment for the 2023-2024 school year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Where is Western Governor? I'm just going to answer. I don't know. It's an online school. So, so it's everywhere. Yeah. They have an owl. They're all they're, 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 oh, they're they're together. She's being assigned to two of our, to our best teachers. Mm -hmm. Can I call the roll, please? Mrs. Feigl? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lovemore? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Resolution 93 is to approve the first reading of new, replaced, and revised board policies that are listed, and also to incorporate one bylaw. Um, Mrs. Claypool pointed out today that our boundary bylaw is not uh, up to date because it was never revised um, once that we had uh, taken in the Newbury Township. So that is corrected in the bylaw now. Um, so. Uh, Good catch, Mrs. Claypool. And uh, I have notified the rest of the board of that fact this afternoon. So mm -hmm. it is now included in this. And again, this is the first reading. There'll be a second reading of these resolutions in the next board. So is that the uh, PO0112? Yes. The one that's at the end. Yeah. The rest of them you reviewed. And the only addition there was to insert the names and Newberry Township into the list of uh, entities that compose the district. I'm on the purple of the first reading. 
Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Coleman Wong? Yes. Ms. Hathorn? Yes. Mrs. Sherwin? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Me. Forgot me. Oh. Yes, I do. This is quite cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where got to get them all in there. Yeah. And get them all in there. Where was the additional one? Here? It will be after in the board It's 97A. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Resolution 94 is to approve the agreement providing for the membership of the Metropolitan Regional Council of Governments and participation in the NEONET program. This is a replacement of LGCA. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Levin? Yes. Mrs. Sherwin? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Keipel? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Resolution 95 is to accept the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission to authorize the necessary tax levies and to certify them to the county auditor. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Sherwin? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Papel? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Dunmore? Yes. Resolution 96 is to approve the settlement agreement and release. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Papel? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Dunmore? Yes. Mrs. Sherwin? Yes. Resolution 97 is to approve the service agreement between the West Java Local School District and the Educational Service Center of the Western Reserve Governing Board. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Keitel? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Levar? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Karen, you have 97. Thank you. This is Resolution 97A. Be it resolved at the West Geauga Board of Education authorize the engagement of Herbert Braden as one of its legal counsel. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Feifel? Yes. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lumber? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Eleven. And this is where we would, if I wanted to say something about last board meeting, that's why I would put that in there. Correct? Yes. That's okay. Right. All right. So um, I just wanted to touch back on something that was discussed or, or brought up at our last board meeting about um, public reviews of curriculum, and I think there's some misunderstanding. So I just wanted to take a minute and just kind of clarify, um, kind of how how that is handled already. And I thought the best way that I could explain it as an educator would be to define the terms so that people have a basic understanding of what those terms are and how, how they're um, worked by us. So um, curriculum is what has been at the core of some of the concerns. And essentially, curriculum is just the courses offered by an educational institution. So. When historically West Java Local Schools has approved our program of studies, that is approving the curriculum. Those program of studies are our curriculum because those are the courses that are offered by us. And we do that once a year. Um, to review those, we have the ability to do so when we get those um, board meeting um, agendas. And we can go through and we can look at them like we did last time. From there, from the curriculum, we move down to units and lessons. And our units are our broad um, basis, covering larger pieces of overall standards. And as a public school in the state of Ohio, we use the Ohio State Standards. So if I was going to be teaching a unit um, on literature, that's the broad, overreaching um, unit that I'd be working with. And then I move down into lessons, which are our day-to-day -day instructional components. And these are both the the way that we're going to be teaching it and the way that we're going to be assessing it so that we can gauge our students' learnings. Um, so if I was teaching this unit on literature, I could decide to use a short story and then test if I was looking for a plot recall, I can use a short quiz to assess that. Um, 
and I'll know that I'm going to be citing evidence too, which is also a state standard as well. So I could be looking at that. I could also be testing vocabulary for connotative denotation for that. From that point, my, my resources that I'm using to teach that lesson are going to be much more um, finer points on these things. So from that broad unit on teaching literature to teaching a short story, then my resources could be either the yellow wallpaper or the story of an hour. And that story itself becomes a resource that moves into the lesson which teaches the overall concept of the unit which supports the state standards that I'm trying to, to get to. So the stories, Pearson there for math classes, handouts for supplemental material, those would all become resources and that's not that's not part of the overall courses offered by an educational institution, which is what we are supposed to be looking at, what we have looked at every year, once a year, when we approve the course of studies. Um, all of these are available to any parent. I know that Mrs. Bellum has had those meetings with parents. I know Dr. Benicasa had one with Mrs. Claypool. So these are things that are available to the public, and at any point, we are happy to show all of those pieces in a much more specific detail if it's something that, that there's a concern or somebody just wants to, to see what's going on in you know eighth grade math so i just felt like part of our issue might be a confusion on the terms and what each of those components mean and so i just wanted to clarify that to kind of circle back around to it that's all i have well i have a couple comments first you started by saying concerns about it. I didn't mean to imply that I had any concerns about the curriculum, okay? I just felt it was our responsibility. And if it's not a program of studies and it's actually a curriculum, I think we should call it that, since we're responsible for approving a curriculum. Um, I think there's pieces of a curriculum that are between the lesson plan and the high-level program of studies. Now, you being a teacher, you know more about that in the classroom than me. But it seems to me that things like what's our policy for bringing outside people in to teach a, to teach a particular class, that would be part of a curriculum. Um, so I think there's some specifics. I understand that they're available. Are they readily available? Can I go online at home and look at the health course? I'm not sure. Can I get a better feel for what step second step is and how it's integrated into our curriculum? So those are, those are questions. Those, again, I don't want to start this off by implying that I have concerns. I, I certainly don't. Um, I think it just goes to a little bit more transparency with the public if we actually, as a board, see some things with the curriculum and review it. Now, if the program of studies is a curriculum, and I'm not sure why we call it a high-level program of studies, and we don't call it a curriculum, that would be a question I would have. I'm not an expert like you. I would, I mean, I, I, this is what I do every day, but I wouldn't, I mean, I'm, I'm an expert to a point, right? But there's always going to be people that know more than me. Um, so the only thing that I can say to that is, you know, I can speak from a teacher standpoint that we get very protective of the work that we do. We work really hard to develop lessons that are both rigorous and diverse enough that we can we can modify those for a, a wide range of abilities in the classroom and I would be really uncomfortable putting it out there because then anybody can just take my intellectual property at that point. So it's, you know, I share within my departments, I can, we, we have collaborative discussions. Readily available, I think, is, is more of a subjective term on, you know, I mean, we, we live in a fairly close proximity to each other. To get to a school is not going to take, um, we're not traveling long distances to get there to look at it. So I think that that's. When you say we, you mean the public? Yeah. Well, I, um, I mean, I'm not sure I agree with that. You know, I don't think that the people here at school would want a whole bunch of the public coming in on a routine basis and looking at curriculum. I, I get what you're saying, that it's, I forget what term you use, but you take pride in it. And it's intellectual property. Intellectual property. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't really understand that at a curriculum. I get that at a lesson plan level. I'm not sure I understand it at a curriculum level. Well, the curriculum 
is the program of studies. So that and that is you can pull up the last board meeting you pull up that that right is there. So yeah. that you can do from your living room. Yeah, I don't think okay. Well we might need to have further conversation about this is I didn't know this is what we were going to talk about. This in that detail I'd like to know more about that because I still feel like there's something below program of study before lesson plan. And maybe I can just to start with spend some more time with Dr. Benny Casa. She is the actual expert. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna agree that the program of study that we looked at is really what I was getting at with the curriculum. And I understand intellectual property but um, best practices should be shared with everybody. I mean, if we're that proud of what we have, I'm not sure what we'd be afraid of of other people uh, teaching their kids to the same level we're teaching our kids to. Um, I come from a business where we would share best practices. If I had a division that was outperforming another, which I did, by the way, we would share as much as we could so that they would also be outperforming because, again, public education is about all students. We all benefit from You wouldn't from. share that with another company, with a competitor. Oh, not by might, but I would certainly share it within our company. And I don't, we share, of course we did. They shared things with me. Teachers like share among themselves yeah. in, in districts. And parents yeah. can always ask. And, and I can get the full curriculum when I ask any teacher that my kids have. But like at the college level, we don't post our syllabi for other schools to then use to teach the same course we're teaching because we're all teaching the same thing. I think at high schools, it's probably very similar. I don't teach in the high school area, but I don't think posted syllabi are ever going to occur. But I, I can certainly ask any of my kids' teachers, you know, what does the lesson plan for this week look like? And it will be emailed to me within, I don't know, a day's time. But you're going back to lesson plan again, and I'm trying to stay a level above lesson plan. I'm not asking for a daily lesson plan. And I've seen what parents get with regard to the lessons. I think we need to clarify what it is exactly that you're looking for. Though. Okay, so let me come back. Let me come back with more information on what specifically I'm looking at. I'm going to just pick a couple. I'm not going to pick mathematics. I'm not going to pick science. I'm going to pick a couple, and I will come back with specifically what I think we as a board. And again, not because I have concerns. I think, if anything, this is a way for the staff to show what they have. And I and I don't think parents should have to come into school to see it. I think that's not realistic. That's my own personal feeling. I mean Well if we you're not might, pick math might, you're not gonna pick science. We might agree not to agree. <laughs> you know what I mean? We might agree not to I agree just agree I don't want our person person. to feel like there's a witch hunt. Oh no. I and I don't and I don't and I really take offense to that because that is not what it's about at all. Not at all. And it, the fact that people think that is bothersome to me. That, you know, that's a little bit like, too defensive, in well, my opinion. I, you know, I did not said anything for so long, and that was good for me. I don't know it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> um, I think there's a way for us to take a look together, um, both to clarify Ohio State standards, which is what our entire curriculum is built from. Right. Um, so really, those those are the foundational building blocks, and, right. and I think it's um, well. I think it's interesting. Nobody else will probably think it's interesting. But the building of the state standards to curricula for an individual local district, and I think right. that's more along the lines of what you're asking. This is right. what we're happy to talk you through both our process and our product, and I think we should start there, and then happy to answer more questions. Right. But some of the questions I think you have are more built to resource. Um, and some are individually board um, voted on and accepted as resource. Um, and sometimes uh, we use resource in terms of textbook, and sometimes we do a full textbook renewal process of the board, you know, because of the price point would actually approve that. So there are different pieces and different elements. And uh, let's just start with right. Let's start. I mean, because for example, health. We teach yeah. a certain curriculum of health. Sure. I know there's others. Sure. And that all meet the standards. Right. But they're different, and I just want to understand what our choices were, what our options, why did we choose this? Uh, what are the standards right. versus resources? Exactly. What does those look like? Exactly. What do those two things look like? How to go a little deeper than uh, sure. just the program of study. Yeah, I feel it's equal start there. I'm happy to, anytime. It, it seems like, too, that, that there's 
um, a terminology issue here, and um, it's making me think about um, back years ago when I started uh, training in management by objective, and you had uh, goals, you had goals, a, a hierarchy of the things that you were down from, and some people call goals and goals objectives, and some people call their objectives goals, and the, the thing that people needed to understand was that you start from the broad overall and then you work work down to, to um, kind of zero in on each specific, and as long as we have a general understanding of whether we're calling it a course of study or, or a curriculum, um, that we know where we are in that, in that, um, that line. Does that make make sense? I think we need to have a, a terminology kind of agreement or understanding of which. Um, a couple board meetings ago, actually I think maybe it may have been three board meetings ago, there was a group that came forward asking to organize a theater booster club. And I want to give you a little bit of update on where that was. Um, I've been to two of our plays recently, so I feel like I have been absolutely saturated in uh, the culture when it comes to the performing arts of late. Um, I did uh, I did go to see Susan Golden, the kids did a good job at the high school production. And then also the last weekend, um, I, I took some of my family to see the, the Little Mermaid Junior that was performed at Lindsay Elementary. And again, the kids did, did a nice job, and, and the parents support these organizations to a tremendous extent. It is it's pretty much uh, unrivaled when you go around and see what people do in the communities because there's a great deal of involvement here. Although I think with people in the arts in general, there is quite a bit of involvement. Um, I did meet with some of the um, adults who want to, to put together a theater booster club again. They have good plans. Um, they sometimes jump a little bit ahead. So what I did was I sat down with them and, and presented them with the steps they need to go through to gain board approval. So in our, they're in the process of checking off all of those boxes, and I expect you'll be hearing from them soon. Um, they would like to get involved in, in, and activated um, before next school year. I told them that uh, if all goes as planned, we would certainly put them um, in the organizational resolution in January where I would uh, acknowledge them as a school support group. But there would also be a way for us to, to back up uh, and make retroactive their incorporation in such a way that they could, they could proceed through the balance of the school. There will probably be two resolutions, one when they become uh, organized and become active this year, and then another one next year will just incorporate them into our support groups. They have a lot of enthusiasm, uh, they have some good plans, and uh, I think they're uh, excited about the prospects. So I did want you to know I followed through with that, met again with them one more time, and the fact that I went to those two plays were really not affiliated with that, but it was, it, I just wanted to give a, a heads up and a shout out to the kids who performed in those plays. They did a really good job, so. Okay, great. So. Anyone on the board have anything to report? Okay. Um, we're going to go into executive session. Um, do we make the motion first, or do I invite you to make the motion first to explain what we're going to executive session okay. for? Okay. You guys agree. Oh. Um, this part of the, the that we're going into executive session for conference with legal counsel related to pending or imminent court action and negotiations. And um, is there any action that we taken when we come out? There may be action taken when we come out, yes. Yes. Do we need a motion to adjourn? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a motion to adjourn. Executive session. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. And um, we're going to be inviting Rebecca Prince Horn in, Dr. Ben Casa, Dr. Mark Ward, and Ms. Okay. Um, all the roll, please. Mrs. Coleman Walsh? Yes. Ms. Lemore? Yes. Mrs. Sherman? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mrs. Pfeiffer? Yes.
I'll point to you. Oh. I need to act on it. Your mics are off right now. I turn them off. So. Okay, we're good. So we are reconvening in 904. Um, we uh, are going to adjourn. We have our next board meeting on Monday, April 22nd, 2024, at 7 p.m. here in the board office community room. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All oh, please. Ms. Lovemore? Yes. Mrs. Sherwood? Yes. Dr. Gears? Yes. Mrs. Michael? Yes. Mrs. Calder Hall? Yes. Thank you.